Before going through Robin Williams' filmography, all I knew about him was his death back in 2014, I think, and how he just wanted to make people laugh. I didn't even know upon Googling that he did stand-up in the 70s. Aside from these things, I went in blind with all these movies, and overall, I think a lot of them, or maybe not a lot, but a good chunk of them have something to say about just having fun. However, not all the movies can be that. I'm not including cameos, uncredited, or documentaries because he's like barely in them. The Big Wedding has an amazing cast, Robin Williams, Robert De Niro, Amanda Seyfried, Ben Barnes, and other really good actors that are just wasted. The movie looks like a typical rom-com, and the most exciting part was the cast for me. So it was disappointing when they were not doing anything. Robin is a priest and is the only character that's fun to watch, but he's barely in the movie. The movie's just saying that marriage sucks, and if you get a divorce, then it's gonna be worse. I could have had some fun with that, but most of the movie is a family drama, and after maybe like 20 minutes, or you know what, after the first scene of the drama, I was right over it and it's a lot of that. Some people are miserable, some are there because they're obligated to, and Robin Williams is there in his own world. RV isn't a fun time. Robin wants a fun road trip for him and his family, but what he gets is each of them not wanting to be there, and after a while, it gets annoying. Watching and listening to the son sing, or I think trying to rap. The daughter sings as well and doesn't care about anything regarding the road trip, and his wife is doing something that I forgot about. All of them are interested in the road trip, so all of the family aside from Robin are not the best characters, and that's probably the whole entire point, but it's not fun to watch. You don't want to watch people complain and just whine about wanting to get out or whatever you know it's just not a great time especially when robin is the one who should really be pissed off but all go on a road trip something goes wrong and it forces them to become a family again but it doesn't i mean i guess it's earned but the journey to get there is just downward spiral of like yells not caring meeting other families something going wrong giving up i do like the end credit singing sequence everyone is having a great time and the movie should have been more like that Happy Feet 2 and Happy Feet are okay. You have an entire nation of penguins that sing popular songs and Robin just happens to be one of them. There is a story in both, but they're not interesting at all and just an attempt to make a story out of singing penguins. License to Wood is where Robin plays another pastor and instead of teaching whatever a pastor teaches, he instead decides to stalk a couple to help them with their relationship, which is played for laughs, but sadly I didn't laugh one bit at the movie. It's just another movie where trying his best but just doesn't work, comes off mostly kind of weird. That wants to follow a couple but then the couple themselves are fine, they're a normal couple and if things don't work out then it just doesn't work out. Don't know why he's so fixated on fixing their issue when it's not his issue but then he's a pastor he should be teaching but then he's not straight to vod cheap don't watch it it's okay old dogs has robin and john travolta of all people as friends who are still trying to impress women even though john is married and robin just got out of a relationship the humor in the movie isn't for me once again did not make me laugh one bit it's another movie about marriage and divorce and how much it sucks again and by this point i was pretty much tired of people being in a marriage and then having doubts and then wanting a divorce and then seeing the process from both families like all right just don't get married everyone around him sees how miserable he is and wants him to be happy which is why john travolta to helps him out but it just doesn't quite work out i think he just wants to be alone all i thought about when watching father's day was the jerry springer show because robin and this other guy might be the father to scott seeing their interactions for the most part was fine with some funny bits here and there but then it decides to also focus on the kid scott who has his own story and i'm like i don't want to see this the movie was fine with robin and the other guy and i don't remember his name which is why i'm calling him the other guy wasn't needed it felt like it dragged the movie just getting bullied and having a rough time Trink's issue is that there's too many characters and it jumps around all of them every so often, which means that it doesn't give any of the characters enough time to shine or a reason to get attached to them. The only characters that I remember are Kevin Spacey, whose wife is dead, going through the grieving process, or has a drug addiction. It's either one of those two. There's a character that wants to be an actor, and Robin is just kind of there as a therapist for Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey is still thinking about his wife, which is why he's very lonely and depressed and maybe takes drugs, and then the actor is struggling to find a role. Both stories could have been their own movies like 90 minute movie but then it's like okay when i focus on kevin spacey go back to this guy go back to another person kevin spacey actor other guy and it's like way too much maybe the movie's trying to go for an anthology type of feel but doing it this way isn't really the best 
Deconstructing Harry is a movie about Woody Allen and I couldn't care less about him. It started out promising with Judy Davis having an affair with him and then years later he writes a book loosely on his life and everyone pretty much knows who he's talking about and the scene with him with Judy was fun just yelling at him for being an idiot and I thought cool let's see what's next and it was more of Woody Allen and how and why he does the things that he does. It seems self-indulgent. Robin plays a part where he's literally out of focus and he goes to a hospital to see if any of the doctors can do anything. That was the only other part of the movie that I liked. Also, I don't know if this is just the 2B version, but there's a bunch of weird editing. There are scenes where it will cut midway through a conversation and then come back to characters talking as if there is no cut. A Merry Friggin' Christmas is one of those generic and straight to VOD Christmas movies where you have a bunch of family members going to the grandparents place and one of the characters played by Joe McHale hates his father who's Robin Williams and I got nothing out of it. Family drama during Christmas when it's supposed to be the most wonderful time but for some it's not. It might be a nightmare. There is a dedicated thing for Robin at the end because this movie was shot before he passed away. <laughs> This isn't really a movie, it's a bunch of comedy sketches compiled into an 80 minute movie. Robin is in two of them. There's a hallway scene where he asks for something and then a courtroom where he either plays a judge or is on trial for something. Don't know much about the others aside from these two scenes. It's the first movie that I watched and didn't really think back on it. Just seems like a weird first official debut of his career. Robin sets up a club paradise on an island to help people get away from their lives for a bit and experience a fun and relaxing resort but there's an issue. Some people that come on the island are assholes and they ruin the resort for the rest. All Robin wanted to do was to allow people to escape from their normal boring lives and instead it gets ruined by people that are either selfish or just wants to ruin everyone else's fun and escapism. It's kind of resolved through like a battle, not battle but two sides and they hate each other, battle for like having fun and it stop and everyone's just kind of forgets it kind of weird way to end it and the movie feels kind of loose there is a story but really there are scenes people having fun and then gets ruined and then it has to be stopped that's really it there's not really a structure to it I was so bored with Hamlet. The movie is four hours long and I checked on my phone a bunch of times and didn't care about it after my first watch, which was the first two hours. And then the next day I finished watching the last two hours. I think it's about Shakespeare or maybe a play from him or something like that. I was already somewhat checked out. Not a bad movie at all. Just something that I don't really know or care about. Just not for me. I don't really care about fantasy and specifically fairies and frankly is about fairies. They live their lives and don't want to be bothered by anyone but our main character wants to go outside and see what it's like. She also wants to see a human but the others are like nah stop that. You don't really want to meet a human. They're horrible. But this guy just happens to find fairy life, gets stuck and shrinks to their size and lives and sees what it's like being that tiny and see what fairies are about. He may or may not have fallen in love with a fairy but you know who cares. It's a animated love story kind Kind of sort of coming of age but with fairies and seeing just another perspective it's fine the adventures of Baron Munchausen. I don't remember this movie. Thought it was okay and then just kind of forgot about it. Someone has to defend the city from a three-headed animal robot thing. Just one of the two scenes that I remember. And then Robin Williams is in it for like two scenes I think. Three-headed robot plays the moon. His head is cropped on a moon and he's talking about the plot of the movie and I don't remember at all. Movie definitely has miniatures because there's no way the animal is CGI or the back areas are probably CGI. Not CGI. Just a big painting in the background. Either way, it's a movie that I don't really care about. Absolutely anything was the last movie to be released, and again, it's okay. Seeing Simon Pegg and Kate Beckinsale was, I wouldn't say weird, but growing up, I only saw them as Simon Pegg is the Shaun of the Dead guy, and then Kate Beckinsale is the underworld chick. That was my perception of them when I was little. Seeing them here and like, I don't know, just not dark or gritty or whatever, or like funny and bloody, it is kind of weird for me. But both are in a relationship in the movie. Robin voices a dog as his last role, which, you know, it's not the best way to go out, but you know what? You're a dog, so it's okay. He's there to help about Simon Pegg talk some shit here and there which was pretty funny giving some confidence to go out or whatever you know go on dates or whatever every now and then he just shows up just to say whatever he wants the movie's also crazy because aliens are involved you have scenes in space of aliens in really funny looking suits it's not okay maybe it is kind of bad but it's not completely awful and a bit comical but they're in space like having bets about what to do with the humans or whatever and it was like wait a minute what the hell is this movie I thought it was gonna be about Simon Pegg going on dates with Kate Beckinsale and his talking dog but then somehow we're up in space with aliens they're all watching it like a game 
I didn't even know that there was an Aladdin sequel. Aladdin and the King of Thieves is more of Aladdin after the first one, and that's really it. Aladdin's father gets introduced, and he's all right. Aladdin and Jasmine are getting married and happy after everything. That's really it. There's not much to it. It was like, okay, Aladdin was popular, made a lot of money, let's do a sequel, and it was all right. Robots had one thing that I liked about it, and it was the reality that you have to grow up. Babies are literally made with robot parts, and I'm like, okay, this might be a generic coming of age story, but with the robots, and then after giving birth, or not giving birth, but making a child, this kid figures out that you can always get what you want, working at a corporate job sucks, and the world isn't as magical as it once was when you're a kid, because you're so naive, and everything is possible, I got this, life is good, but then you're forced to kind of grow up and have a lot more responsibilities. Other than that, then the movie is okay with the robots as a majority of the population. All three of the Night at the Museum movies are fine. Ben Stiller is the main character throughout the entire films and he goes through different things. In the third one, he doesn't really do much. His son is still in the movies. I thought he was going to be a one-off character in the first one, but he keeps coming back. In the second one, he's a hacker, which doesn't make any sense. How the hell does a 10, 11 year old become a hacker? I have no idea. He's not even like a smart ass in the first one. He's just kind of there as well. Third one, he's just there like Ben Stiller. Owen Wilson is separated from the group and he gets a lot more screen time, which I'm not complaining. And it goes back to the tablet, which is what causes the museum people and animals to move at night. The second one is a love story between Ben and Amy Adams who's playing Amelia Earhart. They don't actually get together and later on he meets Amy Adams as a normal person and both off screen probably go on a date and then it doesn't work out because she's not a third one. There is a Abraham Lincoln freeze bit that I like quite a bit and then the first one I remember seeing ads for on TV and thought not for me and was probably watching Supernatural or something. The CGI dinosaur still looks decent not like the best or anything but I was expecting it to be worse for a movie that came out in the mid 2000s. Robin plays Theodore Roosevelt in all three movies. Fun time helping out Ben Stiller and still remaining who he is as he was back in the day like with everyone else. In the movie, these just don't do anything for me other than it's entertaining. The final cut could have been a good movie, but it has one plot that feels unnecessary. The cutter code, I could have done without it. It was just there because I guess there needed to be a mystery or something. I don't know what it was trying to do. Robin's job is to edit the lives of people that are dead. He needs to cut out the boring or bad parts of their lives to present a streamlined and happy life. Everyone in this world has microchips in them. When he was a kid, he accidentally killed another kid. In the whole movie, Robin feels guilty for this and is dreading that another person will edit his life and see what he's done. But the movie is like, nope. Turns out the kid was fine. The blood that Robin saw was just red painting. The kid had a family and later on died. It was a fast one on you, but I don't know. It seems like it just undercuts Robin's entire arc in the movie just to be like, no, it's okay. He didn't kill a kid. After that, it's when the whole like code cutter code stuff start coming in and it should have ended when Robin found out the kid was doing all right. Editing a person's life as a job is already an interesting premise. Just stick with that. Popeye was fine. I only know a Popeye through Family Guy. He got big forearms. The story itself did nothing for me. Robin is trying to either impress Shelly Duvall or is already with her. Clearly, I forgot. The only thing worth talking about is Robin punching the hell out of an octopus. <laughs> I enjoyed the big white, but it's another one where I don't really remember much. Being polite, I remember being the big part of it. I think there were bad guys being polite to the person that they were kidnapping. There's a crime in Alaska, a hitman gets involved. It's all decent but forgettable. Maybe I fell asleep when I watched this because I was binge watching most of these movies and luckily they don't like mesh. It's not like I'm watching like the same movie again over and over again. They're all like different in a way, but this one, the big white, just being polite. Even though I'm doing something so bad, kidnapping people, killing people, everyone still has to be polite. Only thing that Nine Months has that's interesting is the commitment part. Julianne Moore wants a kid and our main character is freaking out because he's scared of commitment. What if he has regrets or doesn't like having a kid? Everything else is a generic rom-com. The guy finds any way possible to get out of the situation but in the end decides to stay with her and Robin is just a doctor that shows up every now and then just to be like you're good or baby safe or commit doing whatever. Moscow and Hudson tells the story of a Russian foreigner moving to the US and being amazed by everything. Wish the movie would have gone more into that. Robin would find out that there's freedom, but not really. However, the movie's not that at all. It's a rom-com, so Robin falls in love and there's complications and language barriers, but him and his girl get past it and in the end, they'll fall in love. Robin is still naive about how things really work, but he's happy. So while I wanted a more, I guess, cynical take on a foreigner coming to the US, which I'm assuming there's already a movie about that or just like a lot of movies, this isn't a movie to do it. It's a love story. 
I'm still unsure about Night Listener, specifically the end. I think it's about catfishing. Robin is a radio host and begins a telephone relationship with a 14 year old boy. This is based on true events and the mom is the one that's super suspicious. She lied about him being blind to Robin and later on she's able to see and talk to her neighbor. So I'm assuming she lied about having the son and catfished Robin, but why would she even catfish him in the first place? Was it for fun or is she a con artist? The reason Robin started talking to the boy was because of the book that the boy wrote. He wanted to ask him about that, but then Robin met his mom, quote unquote. I can only think of a catfish because what other reason would this lady do this? But I guess it wanted to end in a way where it was left unanswered. Jack was okay. Robin is playing a kid that's inside an adult body. So there's going to be a lot of situations where it's either hard or awkward for him. Like one of the kid's mothers starts hitting on him and he doesn't really know what to do. And the mother doesn't know that Robin's a student. Just assumes based on looks that he's an adult. Every single kid looks at him weird. But then immediately it's like, you want to be my friend? Jennifer Lopez still looks the same. Even back then, clearly, you know, aged. But still like, how the hell does she look so young even now? I don't get it. But she's the teacher helping out the other kids and Robin. There's also someone else in the movie but I don't think it's a good idea to mention him at all whatsoever. I thought this was going to be a sad and tragic movie based on the premise and there are some things like that in here like how different he's being treated and the way it looks but the movie is much more on the happier side. Life for Robin will be different and hard but as long as people around him stick with him he should have a decent time. Flubber is a fun movie. The only thing that I was worried about was green goo. I thought it was going to look bad, but for the most part, it looks decent. The flying robot that's in his room doing some of his work also looks decent as well. Robin created a flying car, which was pretty cool. All of these creations were a way to fix his real life issues, like his relationship with his girlfriend and the flying robot that's in his room and fixing his creations and sometimes cleaning his room. All of this was the best part, but then when it ties into his real life issues, that's when it's like, okay, he has to go outside, do no more things to fix his issues. When I wanted to see him only create I like Angriest Man in Brooklyn. The entire movie is Robin having 90 minutes to live and it's a bit weird. Maybe weird isn't the right word, but when he asks random person to film him and make amends and apologize, it's kind of Robin Williams saying his goodbye to everyone through this movie. So that part of it was like, this is like real life now? The hell is going on? Robin is a very angry person and hates pretty much everything. Doesn't really get along with his friends or family. And it's not until Mila Kunis tells him he has only 90 minutes to live, which was a mistake made by her. And so he he goes around making amends. There was a certain point where I was getting tired of seeing an angry Robin Williams, not a likable character at all, or really no one in the movie is likable. Everyone is mad because anytime Robin interacts with them, he pisses them off and he actually does jump in the water. He's alright, Mila Kunis brings him back in the hospital and then the movie ends, but that recording and filming of him saying his goodbyes, it is a bit jarring and eerie knowing what happens. Man of the Year is similar in a way to the 2016 election only because of a random or wild card of a person to be elected and become president. Robin is a host of his own late night show and makes a joke about politics and presidents are a joke and states that he'll become the president in a joking matter. That statement then somehow led to him being elected. The movie is a political satire on how presidents, elections, and anything that revolves around it is a complete joke. The fact that a late night show host became a president shouldn't be possible but it is. But then the movie isn't completely a political satire. Christopher Walken helps Robin with his election and gets hurt badly in a car accident and this part didn't fit with the movie because it was a serious moment and storyline which made it feel out of place when everything else was supposed to be making fun of politics and presidents and whatnot. Best of Times has Kurt Russell, who I like, and Robin Williams, who I also like, and is about football, which I don't care about. But the reason you should watch this movie is for Kurt Russell and Robin Williams. Robin made a crucial mistake back when he played football, and now, in the present, it haunts him. He never got past it. So, when he sees Kurt Russell playing some football, he wants back in, even though he is past his prime, and it's a bit sad. Robin was just stuck in this mistake. Kurt Russell has his own story and everything, but that doesn't matter, nor do I care about it. The interactions with Kurt Russell and Robin Williams is all I needed. I like toys. It's a simple story of Robin wanting to make toys, but there's this guy who I forgot the name of, but wants to make toys with weapons. I think he's in the military, so he's forcing weapons onto kids so that they'll grow up either wanting to join the military or just really like weapons. And wasn't there an issue, or maybe it's another movie where people were having issues with certain toys and a lot of the toys were banned or something. Maybe I'm just smoking crack, but I swear there's something like that. Robin wins and nice and wholesome toys would be out on stores. Toys would be sent out instead of the made for weapons or whatever this guy wanted to do with toys. 
Being Human has a cool premise where Robin plays the same character but in five different eras, each era with their own unique looks and issues. By the time the second era ended, I got that Robin got what it meant to be a human. He doesn't learn from these different lives and by the end he's still learning what it is to be human. The first life was a cave and it's pretty much throwing stuff, no talking. There's one in Rome, he's a Scottish crusader. I think one of them he has to kill his best friend or something like that. Super like messed up thing. One is in that present day which is the last one and then there's four for last one. Kind of forgot about, came before the present day stuff but learn from the mistakes of the past and hopefully be better in the present I didn't know anything about the Ruddles 2. Based on the name alone, I thought it was going to be about an animated movie about a group or something. And it turns out it wasn't animated, but it was about a group. The Ruddles is a parody of the Beatles. Robin is a rockologist, which is ridiculous and seems like a crazy scientist. Tom Hanks and Conan O'Brien are in the movie talking about the Ruddles 2 being interviewed about and how they were a big sensation. Both were fun interviews. Also, didn't expect to like and laugh as much as I did. That one person asking why they're filming all the interviews of people acting really weird or strange didn't even bother to watch the first one i guess the first one did well enough that it got a sequel but don't really intend to watch the first one and then i don't know much about the beatles themselves i know some songs but i don't know who the other two members are that aren't john lennon and paul mccarthy or how long they were a group so if you love the beatles then you're probably gonna have a really good time with this one August Rush is a feel-good movie. Evan Taylor wants to find his parents because he's a foster kid and just so happens to be a great singer. The movie is a bit too fantastical for my liking, but it's a kid looking for his parents, so I let it go. Robin is not a good person in the movie. He uses kids to steal money, forcing them to sing. This is his best worst character that he's played in terms of being a horrible person. Instead of working for himself, he uses others to get what he wants. And then Evan is found by his parents because he's a music genius and ends up reuniting with them and all of them are happy. However, I don't remember what happened with Robin. I don't know whether he was caught or just stuck to being underground and using others because once again, I forgot, which I'm noticing I'm saying quite a bit. Deaf to Smoochie shows how a corporation runs a kids show and network. Robin was a host but got caught with bribes and was fired, but that's not going to stop him from being a host. So when he's outside looking homeless, he's still being a host with no audience aside from people walking by and giving weird looks. He just cannot let it go. His replacement would be Edward Norton. He's the audience perspective because he's naive and thinks he got that job because of his skills and how fun he was. And it's not that at all. Realizes the cynical nature of how things really work. Most of it seemed made for the comedy moments because you want to think he's He's going to make it and be a great host but he's not really in control and then the relationship part i did not care for it was there really that's it maybe for runtime the Fisher King is about acceptance. Jack is well off and doesn't have the struggles of Robin Williams who is homeless. Both live different lives but help each other out and Jack learns to accept them as a friend. He shouldn't be because bringing in someone who isn't well off shouldn't even be considered a friend or at least that's what he's told where he lives. But Jack doesn't care. His friendship with Robin means a lot more than society norms. Both get attacked by like these people because they're losers or whatever. Like I don't know why they're attacking to be honest. They're like we hate Robin because he's homeless. Alright and then Jack comes home and then Jack gets beat up for helping him and vice versa. The entirety of the birdcage is just like let people be. Robin's son has a girlfriend and wants him to meet her family. The only issue is Robin is gay and it's not socially accepted for people to come out and be gay. So Robin has to lie and get his boyfriend to go away but comes back and just kind of ruins the facade later on. He goes to get his former wife or friend to pretend to be his wife and the girl's father is an important person so he has to make a really good impression for his son and then when everything is all out the father doesn't even understand why Robin is gay but essentially just let people be who they are. They don't need a how to pretend because because of social norms accept them and treat them like a human being I kind of forgot about the survivors but going back through my notes it's a movie where it gives backstory to the hitman who's hunting down Robin and his friend but then another thing that I didn't expect was the hitman was also getting chased down and hunted as well the switch in between narratives was something I didn't expect at all most of the laughs come from the fact that Robin and his friend were not trained at all and somehow made it out alive there's not a single scratch on them the hitman and then all the shooting both didn't get shot or anything and then both were fired and they immediately wanted I guess the company that fired them they didn't want them to come back fired for like a lawsuit or whatever because they didn't do anything wrong based off of memory which is not reliable at all hire him and get him and then hire another hitman or person to kill this guy and so after all of this the hitman doesn't hunt them anymore because he wants to be left alone happy with his own family and then the other two just go on with their lives like nothing bad ever happened
Robin is the best salesman and Cadillac man. Well, at the beginning, he tried making a sale at a funeral of all places and it didn't go well because why the hell would you ask a person who just lost their loved one about wanting to get a car? He also breaks the fourth wall talking to us about sales and how he's willing to get a sale anywhere and this would help him out with a robbery at his car sales place, which I don't know why this guy would rob at this place. There's money, I guess? Hold on, there's not even money, right? Maybe there is, but a bank sounds more logical and reasonable, but whatever. Robin is able to use his salesman abilities and calm down the guy until the police come by and eventually robin is about to get a sale from him but forgot he was a robber so he gets taken away but robin still wants a sale but while he didn't get the sale his job and ability to talk saved everyone Jumanji is more of a family movie than a Robin Williams movie and I only know of Jumanji because of the most recent movies with The Rock, Kevin Hart, and Karen Gillian. Didn't watch any of them, didn't interest me. Robin gets stuck in a board game for 26 years which looks really cool. It's got some carvings on there and some wood. MJ from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy is one of the kids that finds the board and gets Robin out. I wanted more from the board in terms of going inside of it. That's most of the third act while the other acts are getting to know the other family and seeing creatures get out and wander earth which was fun but inside the board I thought was a lot more interesting. Van Pelt, I think is his name, is the villain. And he's fine. Not really worth mentioning. Well, I guess I just mentioned him, but you know, he's fine. And I probably would have liked this a lot more if I had seen this when I was a little kid. Jacob the Law gives you hope that the movie will end in a happy and cheerful way, but then it just drops tragedy onto you last minute. Movie revolves around the Holocaust and Robin is imprisoned and is able to hear some things from the radio and decides to spread fake news to throw off the soldiers so that Robin and the others can get out. And so going back to Robin Wally, is making people laugh that's what he's doing in this entire movie the situation that they're in is super messed up and depressing but robin saying fake news and making others laugh is great cheering them up so that they don't think about when they're gonna die but then reality hits and it didn't matter how much he made them cheer up because they died but dreams may come is a lovely movie robin passes away and is in the afterlife and it still looks good there are some parts where it looks weird but then that doesn't matter because he's in the afterlife so anything can look weird robin had a family and was happy with his kids but his kids died and then obviously it messed him and his wife up but then his wife committed suicide because she couldn't handle being alone robin sees and knows all of this because of a guardian angel or i guess is it a guardian angel you know what? i'm gonna assume that it is it's probably not it gives a choice either to move on or go back and save his wife and of course he goes back to save his wife because he too doesn't like being alone and is able to reunite with each other it's kind of like the power of love thing or trope which i don't really like but it's forgiven for the different areas and world that robin is in Robin has like one scene in The Butler. He plays a president which was very enjoyable to watch. Movies more about Cecil who is a real person and based on a true story which may or may not be accurate. Probably isn't. Every time a movie or trailer says that it's like okay since it's a movie, Hollywood, a lot of things are fabricated. He works as a butler for the president and sees how the office works and how things change or don't change and this creates some tensions between him and his family because around this time some people didn't have the basic quality of life and it was a struggle for a lot of them. Family keeps asking him about confronting the white house for change on unequal pay and other things that would help others but it gets denied because they don't care even if they were invited to the party it got denied and cecil feels uncomfortable because of the class difference even after oprah dies when obama is president cecil is still ready and prepared to meet him about equal pay inequality also maybe this is just me oprah was good in the movie but i just couldn't stop thinking about oprah as the host of her own show it took me out of the movie every time and went back to her what's that clip of her like not yelling but saying like you get something I just kept thinking about that. Again, that's just me being a dumbass. House of D tells a coming of age story of Tommy who meets some very interesting people while living in New York City. He gets advice from a lady in prison and her window is conveniently near the street and it's also because his mother isn't doing so well. She's very overprotective of him and is clearly depressed and sadly she takes her own life in the end leaving Tommy on his own. Father is gone and she's struggling just to get by while having Tommy and of course he meets Robert Williams who is a mentally disabled person but helps out Tommy just by hanging out with them. Tommy needed someone to hang out with and talk about life and anything else. Tommy has to move on with his life and moves out of New York, comes back years later to get some closure, saying goodbye to his mother, reunite with Robin who's somehow still alive. I feel like by the time Tommy was an adult, Robin was in his like 40s back in the day and then I guess 20, 30 years later he's like 70. Just kind of hard to get by but you know get to say hi and then goodbye to him and then he also gets to meet the lady from prison at the end which I thought was nice. In a way she was his mother for a bit. Also how do you find her? Like maybe it was easier back in the day just to look at one of those phone booths with those large ass books or whatever of every address but still finding like the exact apartments like how did you do that anyways it was a nice moment Tommy getting his closure with everyone
dead again. Robin is again in like two scenes or something like that. One of them has him saying fuck off to a character and then the other one I forgot about. This movie has a mystery, neo-noir and romance in it which got me a little bit worried because sometimes genre meshing together or just kind of blending together sometimes it doesn't work out and it would feel too bloated but it works well together. There's two timelines and both are connected because of reincarnation. One of the two people I forgot which one because I'm bad with names but one of them reincarnates in the present because he or she was killed in the past timeline by Frankie and as a revenge comes back to kill him. Just playing the long ass game and having a big brain. The two timelines are a mystery. The setting is neo noir which was damn good and then the couple whose name I forgot about is the romantic part. It all ties together and makes sense in a crazy revenge story and then it has a dramatic end for some reason which I guess the movie did have a theater type feel to it but it's not overbearing until the very end. Hook is another family movie where Robin is stuck in a fantastical world or situation and needs to deal with it. Robin is jaded and tired from work and doesn't have time to deal with his kids nor does he put the time in to deal with them. Tells him to shut up at one point because they started yelling at each other. But then Hook comes in and takes away his kids because Robin is Peter Pan in the movie. However, I never once saw him as Peter Pan. I just saw a father finally paying attention to his kids and understanding their mindset. He's been busy with work for so long that he forgot how a kid thinks when they don't know much about the world. Everything to them is magical so he's able to save and reconnect with his kids when he's forced to understand his kids. I never watched Aladdin growing up, nor most of the Disney animated movies, except for Lion King and The Little Mermaid. Watched those two a lot. I only knew that Robin voiced the genie and is clearly the best part. Giving out wishes, cracking jokes whenever he's out was a lot of fun. And the story with Aladdin and Jasmine is good, wadding out of his third typical traditional role. Aladdin is seen as a street thug and wants to break out of that, while Jasmine is tied down to the traditions of her family. Aladdin tries to be someone that he's not, and Jasmine doesn't want that from him. She likes the way that he already was, he doesn't need to be part of a rich family or anything just needs to be himself. The world according to Garp is essentially about life, traditions, artists, and what's the point of it all? Like why put so much effort into one thing when there's no incentive but you're enjoying it? There's even one animated part in here which was fun. Robin's mom is pretty funny with her first scene talking to her parents about traditions and how much she doesn't care about it. Robin talks to some of his mom's friends about death and how it just happens to everyone and he's going to suffer someday whenever his mom dies. It's as if whoever wrote this movie was like, I'm thinking about life so I'll just write about it because why not? Robin is good at wrestling and teaches wrestling at school as a backup job. He really wants to be an artist but it's not easy and not everyone can be an artist and make a living out of it and you have to be okay with that. Once again, The Face of Love is another movie where Robin is barely in it, but it doesn't affect the movie in any way. It's about not being able to move on, being stuck or fixated on the past. Nikki is the main character and lost her husband. Years later, she still isn't past it and meets a man who looks like her dead husband. And what do you do when you see a doppelganger? You follow them, obviously. And every time she follows the man, it gets creepier. She just wants to be happy again. She's willing to do anything for it. Even lying to Robin and her daughter about this man, which backfired. Once the daughter meets him, freaks out, she already moved on and Nikki hasn't. The man's name is Tom and he's an artist and later figures out about why Nikki wants him, prevents Nikki from committing suicide later on. And then Tom dies, I think of natural causes or cancer or something. He dies, right? Nikki goes to his art gallery and gets her closure there with him and her husband finally moving on because she was like ruining her relationship with her daughter, not Robin at all. He shows up as a friendly neighbor, which I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw him, I was like, is he gonna be like a threat or something? Because he just seems super nice, but that's just really it. He's just a really nice neighbor. So there's a bunch of robots or AI movies about having their own minds that I haven't seen and by Sentinel Man is a good one. Robin is an android and for the most part still looks decent, not the best of the best anymore because CGI has come so far and he gets treated not the best especially by the little girl. She does not like him at all but he sticks with the family until they all die and he learns to be human. Learns that everyone around them will eventually die and doesn't like living only to suffer and see people you love die. Sam Neil is the only one in the family who is nice and interacts with him and becomes his friend. Robin eventually gives his face on his body and now seeks to be part of humanity. Most of not all androids are seen as accessories. Robin seems to be the only android that's understanding of how it is to be a human. He's able to be acknowledged as being a part of humanity, meets Portilla and dies like a human because he's lived for so long and wants to end his suffering. Boulevard, didn't know much about it, thought it was gonna be about a street or an accident on a boulevard street, but it's not that at all. Robin plays a man who is married 
but hasn't told his wife or anyone that he's gay. He hasn't come out yet and for years he hasn't been able to come out or be himself because he's scared he'll be judged or shamed by anyone close to him or just everyone. So he's been hiding it. Not happy at all. Even though he enjoys his time with his wife, he's looking for compassion with another man. Meets Leo who's in a rough situation. Robin tries helping him out but manages to make things worse for Leo and himself as his wife figures out who he really is. After finally letting it out, both go their separate ways. Leo is gone. Robin goes search for his happiness and his wife is also just I just go live my life and the his scenes with his friend in a hospital bed were all really good as well that's when Robin is there just to kind of be himself world's greatest dad is not what it sounds like Robin is a writer and wants to make it big but is struggling he has a son Kyle who's not the best a bit of an asshole Kyle has issues at home and at school and Robin has to find him dead but takes advantage of his son's death for his writing he gets the attention of his co-workers and job offers he's lying out of his ass for all of his attention because he never had it and it's the only big opportunity for his writing wasn't good enough to get recognized by his writing and chose to be selfish instead of being the world's greatest dad was willing to do anything to be known as a writer he comes clean afterward tells everyone I lied and feels bad for using his son's death for his own gain which I don't know it's good that he came clean but I don't know if he's like for lying for a long ass time being like yeah this is good shit right there's gotta be some punishment I saw that Robert De Niro and Robin Williams were in Awakenings and thought this has got to be a good movie and it was. Robin is a doctor trying to treat his patients with Parkinson's disease. Robin is trying to fix them in any way. Just finished going through Scorsese's filmography and Robert De Niro shows again why he's great. Struggled to behave like a normal person in society was good but also sad because I don't think there's a cure for the disease. So Robin's search for a solution seems helpless. The signs of De Niro acting normal was hopeful but then it starts not to work. Robin breaks out a Ouija word at one point as a test which is like why does robin not know what happens when you use a ouija board crazy shit starts happening but robin is fixated on fixing De Niro that he's ignoring eleanor who's been asking for some coffee and luckily he takes her offer at the end which means that he's not too far gone in his research and then robin's final response to finding a solution is that the human spirit will maybe not cure the disease but help the patients cheer them up and you know have a good time I think Seize the Day is the best dramatic role from Robin Williams. From the start of the movie until the end, Robin is not happy and is struggling for the most of it. He just lost his job at the beginning, tries finding a job but doesn't get one at all. His wife is losing faith in him and isn't interested in him anymore, fixated on being the best and every time he does that, he most likely fails at whatever he's doing and then questions what his purpose is after losing everything and this is the entire movie just seeing a man lose everything, having a chip on his shoulder and having the worst day in his life for 90 minutes and I really like it which I don't know what that says about me one hour photo explores what a parasocial relationship looks like Robin is a lonely man who works at a photo area at a Walmart not Walmart but it looks like a Walmart and he starts having an obsession with the family he starts to have a relationship with his family within his own head things about being at their family gatherings and wants to be part of their lives he shows up at one of the games for the kid and it was creepy as hell sitting there waving and smiling the kid has no idea what's going on the reason for doing this is past trauma Robin was exploited as a kid and his family wasn't perfect he sees the family as a perfect family but the parents are getting into arguments and the father has an affair to see and live with the perfect family but that's impossible and just hasn't gotten past that yet whenever i see nolan movies being ranked a lot of the times insomnia is super low and i don't know why that is robin plays a murderer and is really good at it he's able to get the best of al pacino who is jaded as a cop forces him to be on his a game the way he kills is super creepy he likes to clean them up and then comb the person's hair like a toy trying to convince that him and pacino are the same because pacino accidentally shoots a partner and tries to cover it up while investigating robin partner notices his suspicious ass looks and activities robin doesn't have to care but pacino still has to care because of his job the the movie is also a remake and I've never seen the I think Norwegian version that came out in 97 or 98. I don't know how good it is compared to that version but this is pretty damn good. Good morning Vietnam! Good morning Vietnam. A good chunk of the movie is Robin talking to himself on the radio for entertainment and those were the best parts and upon further research and honestly just kind of being bored turns out those scenes were improvised. It's just Robert Williams saying whatever and it cements how great he is. He's able to be entertaining by saying whatever he wants and the story with the Vietnamese Robin befriends him and turns out the boy was planning on killing the soldiers because his family died due to the war. Questions why his family had to die and why there even a war in the first place. He gives a good reason as to why he's doing what he's doing. The boy saves Robin because who was and Robin goes back home questioning his role in the war and just wants to be safe the war that's happening it's pointless why is it even happening probably for like money or oil or whatever you know 
Mrs. Doubtfire is the movie I heard and knew about the most, but I didn't know too much about it, so I was still going in blind. It's a really wholesome movie about Robin wanting to make his kids happy. Him and his wife just do not work with each other. Robin wants to have fun while she wants a structure to their kids. Both split. Robin misses his kids and dresses up as a nanny, and it looks good. He's lying, but not doing anything illegal or bad. Just wants to see the smile and laughter of his kids. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. This isn't like the first solution that he thought of. His wife doesn't want the kids seeing him, which is why he dresses up. A lot of Robin trying to keep up with the lie and then not telling his landlord so he has to lie to him as well. In the end, both agree to co-parent the kids because Robin makes them happy while his wife will deal with the school and everything else, you know, I guess boring stuff. Because Robin in this movie just seems like the perfect parent and father. Patch Adams is a movie that is certainly needed. A big reason why I don't really use social media or more specifically Twitter is because it seems like a lot of people on there want to start fights or just take things way too seriously. And his movies like chill the hell out and just laugh. Robin goes to university to be a doctor and has issues with how things work. Robin just doesn't want to talk to his patients. He wants to cheer them up and have a good rapport with most if not all of them. But the school's like no. This is a job and take it seriously. They would have convinced Karen to be more optimistic and just much more happier. First season trying his methods she doesn't like it she thinks it's dumb and over time he's able to make her laugh with that clown nose and not be unbearable but then later on karen is killed by her ex because he's just a horrible person just as she was about to be much more happier in life someone just had to come in and just ruin all of that and then robin is caught lying about getting into the university and despite all these things happening karen dying lying to everyone he still talks about changing the way that doctors interact with their patients instead of treating it like a job try to make them laugh try to make their day a lot more better or happier don't coming all serious with like a laptop I think the most shocking part about Goodwill Hunting is that it was written by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. They should co write some more because it's really good. Matt Damon is the main character and is searching for the meaning of life. What makes him happy? Why does he feel out of place? Why is he so much smarter than everyone else? Robin is asked by a friend, well, maybe not a friend, especially what happens, but ask him to help guide Damon for a better future because he can make things better. And this is what the professor wants from him, and that is where the issue is. Robin starts to have a good rapport with Damon. At first, sizing each other up, Robin like legit just grabs him by the neck being a complete just badass i did not expect that and over time both like talking to each other but then the professor is imposing damon with his success and failures he's afraid of failing which is why he really wants damon to succeed damon should be able to choose what he wants to do with his life he hangs out with ben affleck and his buddies but clearly doesn't fit with them since he's associated with them gets into fights and just bad situations and then he meets a girl and really wants to be with her because he's happy whenever he's around her chooses to be happy and goes with this girl like a shock by damon leaving he also knows that he would be better off leaving. Dead Poet Society is my favorite movie mainly because of what it all means. You should be able to do whatever you want. Robin plays a professor and immediately has her interest because he should be teaching and while he is, he's not teaching in the traditional sense. Robin rips the book in front of the class which already tells you this doesn't matter. They go outside and play soccer or whatever for a day because why not? A young Ethan Hawke is good in the movie. He's the quiet kid in class that doesn't want to do anything which was totally me in school. Robin sees that and is like okay let me try to push this kid to be more involved and open up more. One kid has his parents who want him to be a doctor but why not let your kid choose what he wants to do but the parents are like nah you gotta go there shouldn't be any rush to go to college or whatever just take your time the other teachers look at robin in a way that's like this guy is kind of weird or why is he doing that but it's clearly going to be the most memorable professor for going against the status quo it does get him in trouble along with other students getting in trouble on his watch which means he's going to be replaced and it sucks the best way to end it was some of the students standing on their desk saying oh captain my captain robin was able to get through some of them about do things your way whenever you want to it shouldn't be the way that it is and that was robin williams filmography there were a few bad movies and a good chunk of them were okay for the most part anytime he was on screen then i enjoyed the movie way more he's a lot of fun and i already know i said there's a bunch of times in the video but he makes you laugh that's all he wanted to do didn't grow up watching his stand-up or movies but i kind of wish i grew up watching him a good chunk of the movies also had something to say dead poet society you should be able to do whatever you want or in patch adams where he's convincing everyone to stop taking things seriously and just be able to laugh don't be a piece of shit i wanted every one of his movies to be like that but with 63 movies that's just impossible another thing that i'm going to be looking for in future filmographies is the diverse set of genres that an actor or director can do he can be scary like an insomnia or one hour photo and dramatic and seize the day so that is it for me and this has been the road so far